Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm bringing you my top 10 games for two players out of 2021. Now, these are not all exclusively games for two players, though many of them are. They are just experiences I enjoyed at a two-player count, and there is a, a whole slew of different kinds of games in here. So if you enjoy combat games, you'll find something in here. Maybe more abstracted ideas, trick-taking, you're going to get some of that in here. All sorts of stuff. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it with number 10. My number 10 is a word game uh, made from the folks that make Exploding Kittens, and this is called A Little Wordy. It is a game only for two players, in which you are trying to do a little deduction and figure out what word your opponent has come up with and is hiding from you by triggering abilities on certain cards on the table that will give you information. What's the first letter? Uh, show them a letter, and if they have that letter, they have to say yes or no. Things like that. Things of that nature. Those powers have costs, and you are trying to spend as little as possible and figure out your opponent's word in the fewest moves available to you, right? So, it's very neat. It's a simple game, certainly a very straightforward game, but it manages to do something clever, something outside the box. And while word games are certainly not my favorite style of game, if I was going to play a quick, simple one with just two players, I think this would be my pick right here. So, for an interesting little word style, you know, word themed kind of game and, and about deduction and, and uh, creating words, a little wordy is the one you're looking for. Next up, we're taking a look at Rift Force. Rift Force is a head to head combat kind of game. Uh, something akin to a Lost Cities, perhaps, uh, or, uh, you know, Shot and Totten, in which you are fighting each other over specific locations. But in this one, each of those cards not only has a value and a number, but a special ability. You are going to draft different factions at the beginning of the game. Those will make up your deck, and then you can trigger those abilities on your characters. They will deal damage to characters across from them, move your opponent's characters around, maybe you rearrange even your own side in order to try to protect your people while eliminating your opponent's characters. That's basically it. It's very light for this kind of game. So if you want something that is uh, combative, that is head-to-head, -head, but you don't want a lot of rules overhead, then this is a good one for that uh, play experience. So that is Rift Force. Next up, I've got a trick-taking card game called Jekyll vs. Hyde. And in this one, one player is of course playing Jekyll, the other one Hyde, that other personality within the same body. And one of you is trying to have the two players win the exact same amount of tricks. You, you want balance within your personalities. The other player wants there to be a big difference between the two. And they don't care who takes the most tricks. They just want the two numbers to be as far apart from each other as possible. And therein lies the uh, the interest in the game. So you have to manage your hand of cards. If you are the one who is trying to have that same number of tricks, you have to know when to lose one, when to win one. Uh, same thing for the other player, of course, but they're acting as the, the chaos maker in many ways. It's very interesting. It manages to do a nice amount with very few components. It's a few tokens, a little board, uh, which denotes the progress uh, that the you know the the points that the players are earning, and then a small deck of cards and some tokens. Like I said, so that's it. It's got gorgeous artwork, very neat theme. I like this Jekyll and Hyde theme, and uh, it's one of a very select few games that are trick-taking games for two players. Well, here's another one, and it's a good one: Jekyll versus Hyde. This next one is a particularly interesting design. It is an abstract game uh, that almost looks like um, a chessboard, and well, in this case, technically three chessboards, but it's also a very funny game. It's called That Time You Killed Me, and it is a time traveling uh, design, that's the idea, in which you are traversing through these three boards, the present, the past, and the future, and trying to eliminate your opponent from one of these boards. You will, as you play the game, introduce new rules because there's hidden packages in, in the box which you open as you uh, finish new games. So you'll open something up, there'll be some new content in there, 
and you can incorporate that into your new new sessions of the game. But the writing in the rule book is very humorous. The theme is sort of tackled in a humorous way, and yet the game is thinky. It's a, it's a crunchy kind of game. You have to know how to manipulate all of these things offered to you while attempting to survive. Also, production quality here through the roof. Really a very nice production. So that time you killed me, if you're looking for something, perhaps for someone who enjoys chess or something of its ilk, and yet you want something much lighter hearted, you know, something a little sillier that will still engage the, the old noggin. So that time you killed me is a good one for that. At number six, I've got Destinies, which plays one, two, or three players. And in it, you are going to be exploring a map and trying to fulfill your destiny as you find new locations, encounter new people, explore new interesting things on the uh, on this board that you are making up with tiles as you move around. Now, this game has an app assistance. There's an app that is required, and that app is going to show you new encounters, ask you to make new tests and checks and things like that, have you rolling dice and checking your success rates. It feels a bit like an ex much more exploratory Mansions of Madness. And it has one particularly clever system with uh, these, these uh, sliders, or sort of these tracks, that denote how many successes you get. You have a slide going, say, 1 through 12 with pegs, wooden pegs in there. And for every one of those your rolled check passes, you count one success. Of course, you get to move them in-game. So make if you, as you drop them lower, it's easier to pass that spot and make that check. Some negative things will push them up. So it'll be harder to make it to that point. Really interesting stuff. Gorgeous, well implemented, and the whole thing is very cohesive. And um, again, you can play with up to three players with everyone having a bit of a, a secret destiny they can pursue. So if you enjoy that, that uh, ma you know, mashup between app assistance and exploration, this is going to be a good one for you. Number five for me is one of those tiny little wallet games from Button Shy Games. This is called Death Valley. Death Valley also has a solitaire mode, but it is basically a two-player game in which you are going to be traversing through various landscapes, finding animals, uh, finding picturesque uh, locations in Death Valley. You will be managing your cards in front of you, and it has very much a push-your-luck feel to it. You will be drawing new cards, sometimes face up, but sometimes face down. And if you have too many of the same kind of card, then you will bust and lose some of those cards. You are trying to um, fulfill not just what the card is giving you as symbols, which you can use towards scoring conditions, but the very scoring conditions printed on the cards. Some of them have built-in victory points, just straight up points. But also, something that if you achieve, you get more victory points for. Like many of these wallet games, which are only 18 cards by the way, uh, the cards are multi-use. They, they manage to do a lot with very little surface. So they'll, they'll show you a picture, but uh, points over here, and a number here, and a special ability over here. So. But they managed to look gorgeous. This is some of my favorite artwork this year, to be to be honest. And uh, the game is engaging. It it does set collecting with that really neat push your luck, figure out when to go in strong or when to give something up, uh, when to take a rest turn and kind of back down from what's going on. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was superb. So Death Valley is my number five pick. At number four, I've got a game that perhaps most people would not think of right away when trying to come up with two-player games. But my favorite player count for Ankh, Gods of Egypt, is two players. It is the... it's the most engaging for me. I find it to be a, a neat mental exercise that still manages to be dripping with theme. You are going to... it'll be sort of a, a tit-for-tat fight as you are moving your units around the board, taking actions, summoning new figures onto the board, splitting up the landscape, and trying to control different monuments in all these different landscapes. Very much enjoy it. Um, it'll be a wonderful combination of gorgeous, overproduced, incredible miniatures and artwork and all of that with a game that doesn't really feel like the typical 
shouting, uh, bloody murder kind of game. It's much more methodical and thinky than that. So Ankh, Gods of Egypt, at two players, is something I recommend you try. It will be, uh, I suspect, something you very much enjoy. My number three is the second edition of Summoner Wars. Summoner Wars is a fantastic two-player dueling game in which you'll be moving cards and summoning cards onto the board where they will behave basically like miniatures and attack your opponent, trying to eliminate their summoner. Well, second edition changes a decent amount. The cadence of the game is going to be a little bit different. Some of the upkeep is going to be a little bit different. Turn structure. And then it also comes with these very cool custom dice, now with uh, not just pips, but symbols on the sides for melee attacks, for ranged attacks, as well as a special symbol that some cards will utilize for big, grandiose, special abilities. So, the core box for this has six factions in there. There's already been a release with two more factions. You could just pick that up and play that, actually. Uh, that's standalone, but you can, of course, combine it. And I think they did a wonderful job updating this, uh, brightening up the artwork, making it sort of pop a little bit more, and having another pass at the rules, smoothing some, some things out. So definitely recommend it. If you've not played Summoner Wars before, and you like the style of game, I would definitely say go get it and check this one out. And if you have the first one, you might even want to consider, uh, you know, upgrading your edition so that you have something that maybe you can get to the table a little more easily. So, there you go. Summoner Wars, second edition. All right, we're in the top two, and I thought both of these were just fantastic two-player-only games. My number two pick is a game called Botanic. And Botanic is a tile-laying, tile-drafting sort of game in which you are in this strange laboratory, and you are going to be taking tiles, placing them onto a central board, in order to both program them and then ultimately release them. The problem is when you release something, you might release your own and your opponent's. You don't want to do that. So you have to be tricky with the symbols, with the shapes and the colors you are selecting. Once they do get released, you will build them in front of you, connecting some piping and trying to have large groups of the same color, trying to collect these interesting flowers that are growing out of the pipes in order to get victory points. And, you know, ultimately just trying to outmaneuver your opponent. Slow them down while you speed yourself up. It's very interesting. It's uh, It's got some minimalistic sort of scoring, so everything is really important in it. But I thought the artwork, the the strange uniqueness to this world, the, the, the grit of it a little bit, but seen through a very shiny lens, I thought the look was great. But then the gameplay itself is lovely. Quick turns, nice cadence back and forth, and then a fun puzzle that you can mess with as you are building all this up, trying to, again, outmaneuver the opponent. So Botanic, if you like all of that, if you are, for example, a fan of Lost Cities, which I mentioned earlier, you gotta check this one out. I think you'll like it. That is my number two. And then finally, at number one, I've got a game called Great Plains, a game for two players only, in which... Uh, it's a fairly abstract game, to be fair, but it is supposed to be tribal in nature. Two tribes, represented by adorable animal meeples, are going to be moving on the board, showing up next to themselves, sort of coming out of caverns and so forth, trying to control specific areas. And this is an area majority style game. You will be also collecting special ability tokens and using those when appropriate. You say you land somewhere that gives you a little horse token, well, you can use that by cashing that in, and instead of placing yourself right next to where you would go, skip a space, go a little bit further. Or maybe you have an eagle and you can jump over a mountain range and land on the other side of that. All of this maneuvering is very interesting, and you have to both conserve your figures, you only have so many, but also know when to hold a position, know when to make a push towards something, uh, know when to misdirect your opponent, as to something you think you might be trying to take over and sneak over here and uh, take up something that maybe they weren't looking at. Really enjoyable, short, very quick, very simple game, but a lot of flexibility and setup. It's got a really neat, you know, uh, shuffled set of tiles that make the board. 
So that's very distinct. And then the special abilities are just enough to give you interesting things to think about without being overwhelming. There's only three special abilities. You'll know them immediately, basically. Really like this. Vibrant. It pops. It's quick. You can play twice in a row very easily. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, just one of those designs that felt both very fresh and like a classic. So that is Great Plains. And that's going to do it for me, everybody. That is 10 fantastic two-player experiences from 2021. I hope you uh, discovered something new and uh, maybe help me discover something new. Tell me below some two-player experiences you had this year that you thought were just spectacular. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. All right, that's going to do it. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.